Okay, so what have we learned so far? We've learned how to write a model object and uh, we've learned how to annotate various fields in the model object so that Hibernate creates a table for us and then we do the mapping. We've learned how to save this object into the database. We've learned how to retrieve data from the database and create model objects with the data populated. And uh, we've learned to do all that using Hibernate APIs. This is all fine, but we are making one assumption here. We are assuming that the member variables inside this model object can all go inside single columns. We made the assumption that an ID can be just one column. The name member variable can be one column, so and so on. So the example that we've taken uh, allows this. It's possible to have single columns for each member variable because uh, of the data type that it's using. So, you know, they're primitives. ID is an integer, name is a string, address is a string, phone number is a string, date of birth is a single date. So each one of them can be represented as individual columns, which is fine. Now, the question is, what if one of these member variables were to be an object instead of just a you know a simple data type which can fit into a column say uh, one of these were an object and that object had a few member variables inside of them each of them having particular values now how would you save that using hibernate and what if one of them was an array what if one of them was a list or a set how would we save that using hibernate so that's what we're going to learn in this tutorial and uh, not just this tutorial, we're going to have a few more tutorials in which we'll explore uh, this option because there are a few permutations and combinations when it comes to having objects inside objects or uh, any of these collection objects inside our model object. So the first scenario that we're going to take is this. We will have a user class and the user class, instead of having an address string, it'll have an address object. We'll write a separate address class and the address class will have street, city, state, and pin code. And now our user class, instead of having a simple string as an address member variable, it'll have an instance of this address object. Now the question is, how do we save this address object in the user table? It's not a string anymore, so we cannot have it inside one column. We have four member variables of this address object. Now, how are we going to save all those four? We'll look at the most simplest implementation for this scenario in this tutorial, and we'll look at a little bit more advanced implementations later on. But as of now, the simplest way to do this is to have each of these member variables of the object inside the user class. Also, to have separate columns. So what I mean to say is, now, the user class has an address object, and the address object has some member variables. We're going to treat the member variables of this address object the same way as you would treat member variables of the user class itself. So we'll assume that there's no address object. It's just straight city, state, pin code are four other member variables of the user class itself. And uh, we would save it the way we would save four member variables. So what we are essentially saying is to have separate columns and have street as a column, city as a column, state as a column, and a pin as a column. So we are, we are assuming that, you know, it's almost as if these member variables are member variables of the user class. And so it's not like there's another object and uh, the member variables are of that object. It's almost as if it's just one class and all these are flat member variables. That's how we're going to represent this. This option works fine on a particular scenario. And that scenario is if the object inside this user class is a value object. Now, what do I mean by value object? When dealing with Hibernate, we, uh, we see two kinds of objects. One is the entity and one is the value object. Now, an entity is something that we saw earlier. Um, that was the user class. User is an entity. It has an object, needs to be saved as a separate table in the database. And uh, it actually, you know, it's, it's an entity in the sense of the word that it is uh, independent and it contains data that provides meaning about itself. Now, what is a value object? And a value object is an object that has data and even that has to be saved to the database. But 
It does not have meaning on as of itself. It provides meaning to some other object. Let's take address for example. Address, yes, you can have an address object with the street, city, state, and pin code values all populated. But the address object as of itself does not carry any meaning. Uh, when you say address, then you say whose address. It's, it, uh, it's an address of a user class. Just like a name here is name of this user, phone is phone number of this user, the same way the address is the address of this user. Now, without having a user object, just an address doesn't make sense. Just a phone doesn't make sense. It doesn't have a purpose. So its purpose in life is to provide value to this user object. So that is what differentiates an entity from a value object. An entity has meaning on its own, but a value object does not have meaning on its own. So it's not just this address object here, even name, uh, it's a string, so it's a value object. It has a value for an entity and it does not have meaning on its own. So that way, address object here is a value object. So when you are dealing with value objects, you have a different approach versus when you're dealing with entities itself. Well, you can have an entity inside another entity. So there's no stopping you from having, uh, say, uh, another object here which is actually an entity, but it is related to the user object. So you can have a member variable, which is another entity. And that entity might have a meaning of its own, but it happens to be inside another entity. But that's not the case when it comes to the address. Address does not have meaning on its own. It has to be inside a user object, it has to be associated with the user object, otherwise, there's really no point in having an address object. So that's what makes the address object as, in, as a value object. So this approach that we're gonna look at in this tutorial can be applied to value objects. So we're gonna look at some examples of how you can have an entity inside another entity later. But for now, if you understand what a value object is and uh, how it can be associated to an entity, that should suffice. So this, is a value object and this is the approach that we're going to take we're going to have the columns separately for this value object so which works fine because uh, there's no point in having an address as a separate table again as we discussed it doesn't have meaning on its own it has to be associated with the entity so why not have it in the same table okay now let's look at how we implement this in hibernate so i'll create a new address class And this address class will have string street okay city. and uh, I'll leave this as a string for the pin code okay and uh, I will generate getters and setters for all of them now in order to mark this as a value type and in order to tell hibernate not to create a separate table for this, I need to use the annotation at embedded. At embedded tells Hibernate that this object needs to be embedded inside something else. Now, I'll, what I'll do is I'll go to the user details uh, class. Uh, I don't have much here. I just have the user ID and the username. I'll create a new uh, member variable here for address. And I'll also generate the getters and setters for this. Okay, so now this should do. Now uh, Hibernate will know that this address is not uh, a separate entity by looking at this guy here. It says address is embeddable. 
so it has to be embedded so it automatically does the embed you can you can also actually have another annotation here which is embedded now this embedded again is another clue for hibernate to say that this is you know it's, a, it's an embedded object you don't have to do this this is not mandatory if you have this class and the class has been marked as embeddable that should do it'll it'll tell hibernate that it has, it has to embed it it has to put it in the same table and the table we've already defined so let's let's run this um i will have to create a value for you for the address also now we have initialized the two users i'll say address addr equals new address addr dot set street okay i'll have to import address from the dto set street street name addr dot set city city name yeah that should do for now i'm not gonna fill out all the values now let's say user dot set address addr and user2 dot set address i'm gonna set okay let, let me remove this i'll just set for user the first object alone i'm not gonna set for the second object so now i'm persisting this um why don't I remove this? I don't need this second user. Just to simplify things a bit, I'll just have one user and one address. Simple enough. And I will save that user and I'll close. Now, let's see what happens if we run this. Yeah, save this. Okay, it's inserted. And uh, look at look at the query that's just generated. It's generated city, pin code, state, street, everything are columns of the user details table alone. So if we uh, run the query, we'll know what the database looks like. Well, there you go. You have the city name, you have the pin code, state, street. All these are actually member variables of the address object, but they end up in the user table itself because we have set the address as embedded and we have the address class here as an embeddable class.